let's talk about some other environmental toxins. You mentioned lead that you were exposed yeah. to lead. You mentioned BPA. You mentioned a number in, in the beginning. So yeah. let's talk about a few of those. Okay. So let's preface this, David, by saying that you're never going to be truly toxin free. So the goal mm -hmm. is not toxin free. The goal is reducing the avalanche the death by a thousand cuts that we get every day to a point where our bodies can manage to excrete the majority of it. That's the goal. And then mm -hmm. avoid wherever possible. So it's not perfection. I have screwed up and bought things that weren't clean. You know, I'm in a rush. I have four kids like you and we run around and I'm like, oh, that looks good. And then I go, oh, that's not clean. So <laughs> perfection isn't the goal. Improving week over week year over year, month over month, that's the goal. Just try to do better today than you did yesterday. So having said that, common ones, flame retardants. Now you're thinking to yourself, I'm not a firefighter. Why am I exposed to that? However, if you sleep on a bed and it isn't organically derived, it has been likely sprayed with flame retardants. Flame retardants are a tremendous endocrine disruptor. And so if you just bought a bed or you own a bed and it has flame retardants, don't go crazy, right? Like you can't, you can only do what you can do. But if you're looking for a bed and you're about to replace your bed, get a bed that is not sprayed with flame retardants so that when you spend eight hours on it or nine hours on it every day, you're not getting that exposure. Okay. So that's one very common one. Yeah. Lead is very common. Now, the good news is that lead was outlawed from gasoline in 1975. And it was outlawed from paint in 1978, which is a really long time ago. And some, most of your listeners may not have even been born at that point. However, they were born to someone who was born at that point. And the problem is that you get 50% of what your mother had. And your mother had exposure. It sounds like I'm sort of saying something mean, but mm -hmm. your mom definitely had exposure. Yeah. All of our moms did because there were lead pipes. They grew up with lead pipes. They grew up with lead paint, lead gasoline. So... We were born to people who had a lot of lead and we got 50% of that. So lead is very common. And then things like major environmental breakdowns, like when Notre Dame burned and released 500 tons of lead dust into the air, the closer you were to Notre Dame, the more exposure you got and it kind of weaned off the farther you got. So everyone living in a pretty close circumference to Notre Dame also got a lead exposure. So lead is very common. We get exposed in a lot of ways and 10 million homes still have lead pipes in the United States. Just crazy to think, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you want me to keep going? It's only horrifying, right? Yeah, and I know that phthalates, BPA, things like that are, are, are a big deal as well. A lot, a lot yeah. more research coming out on those. Yeah, let's talk about that. So, so phthalates and BPA are huge endocrine disruptors. And when I say endocrine disruptor, people might be like, okay, well, what does that mean? What that means is at the, down in your body, they look like your hormones and they act like your hormones because they bind to your hormonal receptors. So your body gets confused. They also need to be processed like your hormones need to be processed. So this is this is one of my favorite things to talk about. Can we mm -hmm. dive into this? Yeah, for sure. So your liver is responsible for doing the bulk of your detox work. And when you're and your hormones are processed through a number of different pathways, and ultimately they go from being a fat soluble entity, they go through two phases and they become a water soluble bound entity. In the middle, they become a free radical. Mm. In between fat soluble mm. and water soluble, they are a free radical. We all know free radicals are bad for us. So if you want to get this out of you, you need to get it into its water soluble state and put it into your gut. Now we're going to circle back to leaky gut and dysfunctional gut. So mm -hmm. when it's put in your gut, if you have constipation, if you have dysfunctional gut performance, call it that, yeah. or if you have an overactivation of an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase, which is measurable, we can measure this, mm -hmm. you will take that water-soluble bound hormone and you'll disconnect it from its binder. The minute it gets disconnected, it's back to being a free radical and it's no longer water-soluble, which means it has to go back in your bloodstream. It's back in your bloodstream as a free radical. Now, remember, we're getting a deluge of, of toxins every day. So it's not like your liver is just sitting on demand, waiting for a free radical to get created. 
it, it can't always deal with that free radical in the moment. So when it can't deal with it, it puts it into storage. And those storage depots are our fat. So mm. especially for the women who are listening, those endocrine disrupting plastic water bottles that we feed our kids because they, you know, we're running around to sports and the kids are thirsty and we keep that package of plastic water bottles in our trunk so it can get heated up. And sometimes we get thirsty and we drink it too. We're getting tremendous levels of BPA and, and endocrine disruption. And when that pathway occurs and we don't excrete it and instead we recycle it, we've now doubled the work on our body. So when women say, I can't lose weight, I'm doing everything I can, my response is, as long as we know your thyroid is normal, you have a toxins issue because that fat storage is such a powerful place to hang on, to put things that are dangerous for yeah. us because free radicals mm -hmm. are dangerous. Yeah, and the body will actually hold on to the fat yes. and kind of reduce your ability to burn fat for fuel <clears throat> because it's trying to, in a sense, protect protect your body from releasing all of these toxins that will drive up oxidative stress. It wants to reduce the rusting effect in the body, so it would rather, um, you know, uh, again store the fat and not actually break it down. So this can this can, is a condition we call weight loss resistance, and a lot of people deal with this. Yeah. So my response, if you're listening and you're someone who has difficulty losing weight, or if you're someone who's on the metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease type, type two diabetes pathway, this all tracks back to toxins. Tox, toxins are a tremendous issue and we want to deal with that.